Okay, so I'm going to do a quick video here that just talks about the uh, the cabinet that uh, comes on these uh, DC solar trailers. I thought it'd be a good overview just to talk about all the little pieces in here. Um, there are obviously two sunny islands. This would be the master and this would be the slave. And generally, whenever you're interacting with the master, you do it from these menus here. And uh, you can hit the down arrow multiple times and then you start going into the menus. You can see as you go down through the menus and then you can you can hit enter and then you can go, you know, this and escape takes you up a level. Um, so uh, anyway, I'm going to talk about, this is a uh, Sunny Island 6048, that's the model number, SI-6048. Some of the other older trailers had a 60, or uh, sorry, a 5048. Uh, but most of the new ones have the 6048, which is roughly, it means that you can get about 6,000 watts out of this sunny island. And then the slave can also deliver you 6,000 watts. And uh, they do a 240 volt, and what they do is they have this be on one leg of the 240 volt, and this service is the other leg of the 240 volt. So if you do 6,000 watts plus 6,000 watts, you essentially have 12,000 watts over a um, 240 volt line uh, and it roughly comes out to 12,000 watts. So you are capable of, of generating about 12,000 watts of power um, per cabinet. Uh, and then um, sometimes these uh, sunny islands, if it's shut off right here, but it's still powered up, it's gone into the emergency shutdown mode and that usually will happen if the uh, battery charge got so low. The Sunny Island's primary goal is to protect the battery at all costs. And so uh, it will go into a shutdown mode, uh, a safety mode, where you literally have to turn that off for about 20 minutes. And then at the end of 20 minutes, then you can actually turn it back on. But if you turn it on before then, it won't come back. Uh, it, it won't actually start up. Inside the cabinet, you have fans up here. And on the other side, you can see there's another fan. Those are for ventilating the heat out of the cabinet. And that will happen whenever this device, and you can see like right here, I think sometimes they're in Celsius and sometimes they're in Fahrenheit. So when the cabinet gets above 90 degrees, these little fans will turn on. So just temporarily, I'll, I'll rotate this down. And you can see now that the fan turned on and it's venting out and so it ends up pulling air up from underneath here in the vents and vents it out so the cold air would be coming up through and get pulled out so let me turn this back to 90. it's generally where i keep it uh, and then down here you can see these are your 250 amp plugs right there i'll come on the other side da -dong. those are the uh these are twist lock and if you look on the on the cover right here, you can see there's a bunch of writing. This is nice. I didn't realize that. It took me a long time to figure this out, but that'll tell you which plug it is. And then uh, male is the one that has the uh, the prong sticking out, and the female is the one that has the you know. Well, I don't need to give you all that detail. <laughs> anyway, um, the cabinet. Uh, I generally recommend that people not lock your cabinets because. Uh, somebody that wants to break in, I mean, they will bust that lock so easy. It is not that difficult to break these locks. So I would just leave them unlocked because people are going to open it up and they're going to look for something to steal and they're going to be like, there's nothing in here for me to really steal. So then they'll just give up and potentially walk away. Um, some cabinets have extra plugs on the back here, which are kind of nice. I'll come around here on the back side. You can see like right here, uh, there's a a plug there and then another one and then on the other side you have more plugs um, the newer the newest cabinets are the ones that have all those plugs here is your square D AC electrical breaker box each one of these goes to one of the 50 amp uh, plugs on the side right there so if you're ever pulling more than 50 amps this will trip and then here's your typical 20 amps and then this goes to like, you know, the fan motor, goes to the plugs inside of here, the plugs on the back. That's what all these little uh, individual breakers are for. 
Um, now to the right, and then this right here is the midnight charge controller. His primary responsibility is to charge the batteries. Now this is a very important thing that people kind of, they, they always forget about this, but let's say you leave your trailer going and your Sunny Island shuts off because the batteries get super low and it actually goes into the emergency shutdown mode. Your midnight charge controller will continue to charge the batteries and this guy has no idea. So what'll happen is you'll come up to, say your cabin is, or you, you know, you're off, off grid somewhere and you come up to your trailer and you, you turn these back on after it's been sitting there for a week or two, the midnight charge controller can essentially charge your batteries up and this guy has no idea that they're charged up. So you turn him on and he goes, I'm in 10%, I'm gonna shut down. And so it can be really frustrating when that happens. Um, my recommendation is that you power it on so that it's lit up, but leave it in standby mode. Don't press and hold enter to start it. And what that will do is it will kind of just sit there quietly and monitor the battery. And if you have your shunt properly configured, it will track how much power is going into the battery over the course of the, the next week or so, and then it will eventually start to realize that your batteries are at full charge. This right here on the side of the master is the battery shunt or the current sensor. And you can see it's got these big black wires coming up. That's basically what it does is it says, uh, the power that's going out to the battery comes through your shunt before it goes to the battery. And this battery current sensor allows the master to be able to actually uh, monitor how much power is coming in or out of the battery. Now the reason why the battery current sensor is so important is that this guy can work completely independently. He, he basically just pushes power directly to the batteries and he runs your AC. So uh, having the battery current sensor right there, it allows the master to be able to track how much power is going into or out of the battery at any point in time, and it allows you to more accurately know the state of charge on your batteries. Um, I have another video on my channel that talks about how to configure this and um, not configure it, but calibrate it. And it's very important that you calibrate this properly or else this thing can really get uh, out of whack. Like it, it doesn't, like it doesn't know how much power is really directly in there. Uh, let's open up this, uh, this right here is a photo combiner box. And this is where the DC power, it's almost like a circuit breaker, but this is where the DC power comes in and out of the trailer. And um, you'll notice that there is uh, these, Breakers one and two. I don't know if you can tell that, but like you see, like below, it's a double pole, and then three and four is also double pole, and then this right there, your breaker number five, is your midnight charge controller. So when I flip that up, it will turn on my midnight charge controller. It's currently off, and then the trailers that have uh, lights, uh, that'll be breaker number six. And uh, so if you ever have a malfunction or something going on with the lights, you can just flip breaker number six down and that will turn off all your lights. Now there is a special order in which that you wanna turn these on. Uh, and I'll explain here real quick. Uh, I think I have another video on this, but it, it's always good to have the midnight charge controller powered up whenever you change uh, these are the, to the solar panels. So the solar panels on the left and solar panels on the right. Because what, let's say it's a nice sunny day as it is now, and my, my, my panels are getting gobs of sun, right? So there's like a wall of energy, a wall of power. So if I just come down to this box and I go, and I just turn everything on, this giant wall of, of power will hit this, and it can actually burn up some of the transistors in there if there's too much of a jolt. So I recommend, I recommend what you do is you turn on breaker number five, wait for the midnight charge controller to fully boot, then turn on breakers one and two, count to five or 10 seconds, then turn on breakers number three and four. And then to turn everything off, you reverse that. While the midnight charge controller is powered up, you can then turn off one of the solar panel arrays, wait five or 10 seconds, turn off the second one, and then you can shut down the midnight charge controller. And uh, anyway, so that is the uh, 
some trailers have these instructions, which is kind of nice. I can take a little close up there for someone if you want to take a picture of that. But that tells you how to program your uh, uh, your timers. Now, this trailer doesn't have timers. Normally, the, the light timers are right here. This particular trailer, uh, they installed a uh, trailer versus house. And it's kind of a long story, but the previous owner of this cabinet, uh, this trailer, was basically taking the solar power from the trailer and just pushing it onto his house solar system. So that way it was contributing to his home's solar that he was harvesting. Uh, and so he left the switch in here. And basically what it did was it rerouted the solar up to the side here and then off the side here it had just two outputs. And so you could take that over and then join it to the, to the home. Um, let's talk about the cabinet some more. So this cabinet is pretty awesome. Uh, you literally could just disconnect this cabinet. You have like four bolts. You have one here, one here, and then there's two more down on the back side. But this entire cabinet, you can lift this off the trailer. You can see that it's, it's completely self-contained. But you literally lift that cabinet off the trailer. You could hang it on the side of a cabin or a shed or workshop. And then uh, you'd only have to have the batteries and the solar. And you've got a fully contained solar system, like a, a private power grid. So you could move your batteries, uh, and put them down on the ground, you know, next to the shed and then throw a bunch of solar on the shed and stuff. So these cabinets are very versatile. Um, on my particular trailer, uh, you may notice that I have a cabinet on the front of my trailer up there by the generator. That's the original cabinet that came with the trailer. And then I've hung a second cabinet on the back of my trailer and I've combined these two together. So I basically have four sunny islands working in tandem. So it allows my house to pull uh, 24,000 watts of power uh, and uh, it works really nice. Uh, it, uh, I was surprised at how well this, uh, this has uh, been able to work together. Anyway, I think I'm almost done with the cabinet portion of this video. Um, let's think if I missed anything else. Um, this midnight charge controller, technically, so it's a 250. It's a, a midnight classic 250, which means it can take 250 um, volts. But they also have this thing where they recommend that you only do 80% of that. So, you know, think of maybe 210 volts or something to that effect. And on the back of your solar panels, I have different solar panels, but like right here, you can see it gives you a voltage rating. Let's see if I can get that in focus a little better. Anyway, when you have uh, solar panels in series, you basically add that up and so, uh, a typical panel on most of these trailers is going to be about 30, uh, 30 volts. And so you take uh, five panels, you know, you know, one, two, three, four, five times 30, which is 150 volts. So whenever your midnight charge controller is running, you'll see on the left here, it'll say how many volts you're harvesting. And then on the right, it will show you your battery voltage. And then below the battery voltage, it tells you how many amps you're pushing into the battery at any point in time. And the higher your battery voltage is, the less this wants to work. So, because it, it tracks the state of charge of the battery based on the, uh, based on the voltage of the batteries. Um, it's, uh, the reason I started to talk about this is that you can actually upgrade. So the five, the five panels or 10 panels that they have on these trailers, you can actually have more than five panels. This thing down here is rated to where you could have two more panels. So if you look on my solar panels here, I actually put, like I, I extended uh, another solar panel over the back and then also over the front on both sides. So I have seven solar panels on the left and seven solar panels on the right. And that's closer to what is rated for this uh, midnight charge controller. Another option that you can do for upgrading your solar is you can just add a third string of panels. So this is my southern facing right here. And so what I've seen a lot of people do is they'll just lean up more panels on the southern side of these five panels. So if you're gonna do that where you would have three strings of five panels each, um, 
that would be pushing this midnight charge controller uh, towards its limit. Or you can have four more panels on each of the two strings. And again, you'll be getting closer to the, the maximum limit that this uh, midnight charge controller is capable of, of uh, producing. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's the cabinet. Uh, I know a lot of people that have bought these trailers just for the cabinet, and they're gonna hang these cabinets on the side of their house to run their, uh, their, uh, their, um, their battery backup system with the solar that they have on their roof. All right, I hope uh, you've found this uh, video helpful. Oh, there's one other thing I want to mention. Since this can generate 6,000 watts and this can generate 6,000 watts, that's 12,000 watts. So, you know, you want to tell somebody, oh, yeah, you can, you can pull 12,000 watts. But you have to pay attention to how much is on each leg. So I had one situation where the slave was only having to generate maybe one or two kilowatts. But they were pushing this one to seven or 8,000 kilowatts, which means this guy is getting overworked. That's what we would call an imbalanced circuit. And it's, it's nice to try to find a way to balance your home's uh, electrical panel so that when you're pulling power, you're not pulling one side more heavily than the other. Uh, and uh, anyway, long story short, these SMA uh, Sunny Island um, inverters are amazing because they will let you burst as high as 11,000 watts for short periods of time. And the higher that you push it, the shorter the time that you get. So if like, I think it's like three milliseconds or, or one second or something like that if you go all the way to 10 or 11,000 uh, kilowatts. But if you pushed it to like maybe 7,000, if you pushed it to something like seven or 8,000 kilowatts, it would actually let you run for like, I don't know, I think it's like five, six minutes. So the lower that you stress this inverter, the longer you, it'll let you run in that, um, in that state. So I, I really love these, man. These, these are like tanks. Uh, I only know of one inverter that ever got fried and that was because uh, an electrician hooked it up wrong. <laughs> it was, but it was a, that was a mistake. And then uh, the only other time that I've ever had an issue with one of these, it was an older 5,000 um, uh, model. And uh, for some reason, it just did not want to keep the time, the date and time. And so all I did was I reversed uh, the slave and master role and made the old slave the, or the old master the new slave and it, and it fixed it. So um, I, these things are tanks. I love these inverters. They're really, really well built. Um, and so it works really good for like a compressor or a motor, air conditioning, something that has to pull, you know, pulls a lot of amps. They, they call it startup cranking amps just to get it going. And then once it, once it's running, then it kind of drops off. So I, I have not seen these, uh, Sunny Islands, uh, shut down, uh, on, on like well pumps, welders, like uh, all sorts of cool things like that you've been able to use. Anyway, I uh, hope this video will help somebody out there and you'll enjoy it. And uh, it's time to go in and upload this video. We'll talk to everyone later. Bye-bye.